So in this video, I want to change your perception of what a dropshipping, a stereotypical dropshipping business can look like. When you mention the term dropshipping to people in Facebook groups, a lot of people will cringe and say, avoid, it's a scam, it doesn't work, it's cheap, plasticky products that take weeks to arrive from China are tiny little profit margins and super low quality. That couldn't be further from the truth. However, if you still want to go for the dropshipping business model, but avoid those types of products, then this is the video for you. Today, I'm going to show you a dropshipping store that's currently for sale on flipper.com for 136,000 US dollars. They employ the dropshipping business model, so they're not keeping stock of all of their products. However, they are not coming from China and they are not cheap products either. They're quite a successful business. They've been in business, as we can see, for three years and they have an average monthly profit of just over $4,000. I'll give you a bit more contextual background information about these guys in a second. And what you'll soon see is that over a relatively short period of time, they've been able to to build up a very successful business that requires little to no time each week other than order fulfillment. And based on the poll that I put out last week asking people what sort of money they would like to earn from their dropshipping business, then the majority of the people watching this video would be more than happy with a business that makes this sort of money and offers this level of freedom. So the business is called TillyandTedHomeware.com. It's a turnkey e-commerce business in the home and garden niche, which boasts profit margins of 75%. The site age, as we've already been over, is three years. Now, some people might be thinking three years and it's only making four grand a month. Um, I don't know of any typical job or typical level of employment where your income would go up by four grand a month within three years. If you know differently, make sure you let me know in the comment section. So in my opinion, if you ask me at least, um, I would say this is still a pretty successful business, even given the length of time that they've been in business. Just to confirm their monetization methods are via dropshipping. They use Google Analytics. Analytics, Shopify and Xero, so Xero obviously being the accounting software and their primary expenses then for last month was 1600 US dollars. Before we jump into the products then I want to show you some more information. So one of those things is the revenue and profit from the last 12 months. This is still a current and active business. A lot of the businesses you'll come across on flipper.com they'll make a ton of money in Q4 then Jan, Feb, March when sales dip off they'll want to kind of offload the business but still try and sell it at the numbers they were doing in Q4 but it doesn't quite work like that except for these guys their money really is where their mouth is because as we can see um, even through Q4 before Q4 and even as of last month or a couple of months ago they were still doing um, over $5,000 in profit for the month. Let's jump onto their website then take a look at exactly what their store design looks like. Um, store design again I did a poll a couple of weeks ago asking people what they think is the least important or to vote what is least important what's most important when it comes to a business and it's not the first time I've done a vote and it's not the first time that your Shopify store has come um, at the most least important, which to me doesn't make sense because it's the first impression with every new person that comes onto your business. And unless you give off a good impression, then they're not going to feel comfortable and they're certainly not going to make a purchase, especially if you're selling expensive products. So I guess what I'm trying to say is don't skip over or take for granted what your Shopify store looks like. There's always work that can be done or always split tests that can be done to try and improve your conversion rate. So straight away, we're greeted with a 10% off um, discount. This is actually something I recommend everybody do regardless of how expensive your products are. And this is the home page. So straight away, it gives off that kind of soft, feminine kind of touch, that homey feel, um, so to speak. They've even got the pink fonts at the top. Um, to be honest, I'm not a big fan of this because, um, I mean, my eyes aren't great, but I'm, I'm having to squint to kind of see what these are. Um, so if it was me, I'd certainly be looking at changing that. Um, and then moving down, again, a very kind of textbook, typical look of any particular Shopify store. But the first thing that probably jumps out to you is you've not seen this store on AliExpress before. You've not seen this store or these products. These guys are most likely working with lots and lots of different independent and local businesses, maybe even not local, but certainly nationwide, you've probably seen the prices as well. The fact that it's in Great British Pound, so it is a UK based business. I would guess they're working with a lot of private and independent companies that sell these sorts of products and have some sort of deal or arrangement for them and say, hey, can we advertise or can we put your products on our website? We'll sell them at the retail prices, we'll sell them at the prices you tell us to sell them at, and then whatever we get orders for, we'll pass on for you to drop ship. This is also confirmed in the operations of the business where it's 
says if the order is by one of the dropship suppliers, the order is passed for them to fulfill. So basically this business or whoever's running it hasn't got a ton of these chairs in their garage or in their living room stocked up. These will be kept in a factory somewhere by the independent business that owns them. A massive advantage to doing things like this is obviously when you're selling a product, um, let's just take, well, these chest of drawers, for example, 600 pounds, the profit margin on them is probably a couple of hundred. Um, and when you've got a couple of hundred pounds worth of room to work in for your advertising, for your CPA, the cost to um, acquire a customer, obviously you can reach quite a lot of people for that sort of money. So you've got a little bit more room to play with, I guess, or a little bit more experimentation and testing to do and still be able to make that profit. The other advantage to working with independent companies and suppliers is they usually film and take their own content because they're an individual business in their own right. Um, so as long as they're happy to, of course, you can kind of piggyback off the back of that, um, take the content that they use, put it on your website, and it's like free content for you to use and advertise your business with. And obviously it's a win-win all the way around because if you get the order, you win by making your money and the supplier wins obviously by being able to fulfill the order and make their money as well. Something else just to point out is this free delivery. Um, well, not the free delivery in fact, but what it says later on, which is the buy now, pay later with clear pay. Um, this is something I recommend everybody have on your business, whether you're drop shipping cheaper products or selling more expensive ones. Um, it's a great way of kind of piggybacking off the reputation of names that people feel comfortable with. If you go onto ASOS and see you can split with Klarna or ClearPay over the course of three months and ClearPay or Klarna is this household name that everybody's comfortable and familiar with and then they come onto your website and see that same name, instantly you kind of, your brand piggybacks a little bit off the reputation those companies have already built up. Let's jump onto the Facebook ads library then and see how they're advertising these products, how they're making the money. And we'll start off with this one, which is a very simple carousel ad. Um, as you can see, it's original photography of the product in a nice setting. I think they could probably do a little bit of a better job if I'm being honest with their Facebook ads. Um, there's no need to put hashtags and things like that in there. But at the end of the day, who am I to wag you? Um, they're making a decent amount of money each month. So it's one of those things, if it's not broke, then it doesn't need fixing. The best products, the most successful ads on Facebook are always those ones that are selling something unique, something original, something that people haven't seen before. When people are scrolling through on Facebook, they do so for so long each day. They see so many things. They see so much content that if they see something that they've already seen before, they're probably just going to scroll right past it. However, if they come across an ad like this and they've never seen this particular product before, instantly it's going to kind of like make them intrigued into what the product is and want to watch the video because it's something they've never seen before. And this is where the majority of the traditional stereotypical dropshippers go wrong is they'll sell the same products as everybody else using the same content as everybody else. So when you're trying to advertise that one product that maybe 10 dozen other people have tried to advertise and put ads out for a similar content, your audience might already be used to seeing that same content and seeing that same product. So when they see your ad, they just skip right past it because they just assume it's the same thing. When to be honest, it pretty much is the same thing. Whereas if you're taking the time to order the product yourself or better yet, get it shipped to some people who have experience taking content, filming content, essentially creating original content for you to use for your business, then you significantly increase your chances of getting the eyeballs on and stopping people in their tracks when they're scrolling, getting their intrigue and then watching your video. And then that way they become much more likely to buy your product. Back to the video then, it's a very simple video. Um, anybody could create a video like this simply using an iPhone. It's just someone in a nice setting and um, putting together this flower bouquet, obviously in this um, very nice looking fars as well. Let's take a quick look then at the final ad. Another Another video ad and it's just kind of like a drive by that's not the right term obviously but it's just what come to mind it's like a slideshow a drive by I'm just gonna stick with drive by um, of all the different pieces that come in this furniture collection and again as we've seen before they do not have a factory or garage full of these things these will be kept in the independent businesses that are selling them themselves in their own factories and once they get an order for it they'll just simply be passing it on so essentially they are still taking advantage of all the benefits of drop shipping if we come on to their social media pages and just to finish the video off I think it's an important thing to do um, again it's it's a place where I see a lot of people neglect their businesses. If you've been running ads, you're probably 
already aware of this, that people will click who's running the ad. Basically, they'll end up on your Facebook page, they'll have a look around, and maybe even end up engaging with some of your earlier posts. When people are going to spend their money and hand over their car details, they want to know who they're shopping with can be trusted. So when they come onto a Facebook page, if they see things like you have your shop set up, you have your location on, you have a telephone number, you have an email address, you have great reviews, gorgeous homeware order arrived in good time, and basically people, evidence people have shopped with you and had a good experience. They come on and they see recent original content as well, so from May 18th. If we go down, we can see it's all in the same kind of uniform style that's in keeping and matching with the brand. It gives off that impression of an active, professional and legitimate business. And so with that being said, to wrap the video up then guys, the message I want you to take away from this is if you've been trying the traditional Chinese AliExpress type form of dropshipping, it hasn't been working out with you or perhaps something doesn't quite sit right, um, then do your own research and take a look at these guys yourself. Have a look nationwide at the types of products that are super high in demand. See if there's a lot of private suppliers that you're comfortable with contacting and see if you yourself can set up a similar business like this. Yes, it's going to be a lot slower to get started. Yes, it's going to be a lot slower to get results. But as we've seen here over the course of three years, they've been able to build up a very healthy income from a business that probably takes them no longer than maybe five or 10 hours a week. Because at the end of the day, the alternative is that you don't do anything. Um, and I would probably bet my bottom dollar that in three years time, the job you're working now won't be paying you an extra four grand per month, probably won't even be paying you an extra thousand pound per month. So whether you do this or the traditional type of drop shipping, then my advice is just to get started, give it a go, um, because you never know what's going to happen and how things can change for the better. On that note, thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in my next video on Wednesday. Cheers.